Hey, Hickok 45. On this blustery, wintry day, look what I have. One of my favorite bolt guns, the Krag. Now, if I were in Norway, I would call it, I think, something like the Kra Jorgensen. Now, I know I'm really bad at that, but I uh, don't want to disrespect the uh, original designers too badly. I know we pronounce it Krag Jorgensen over here, but it's a, I know it's Jorgensen, uh, but uh, and the Krag is kind of like a Kra or something like that. So anyway, I'm sorry. I live in Tennessee, but uh, we sure do appreciate the, those fellows inventing this firearm. Uh, so kudos to you folks over there and to Springfield for taking it and uh, you know producing it you know for our troops back in the 1890s so this is 3040 Krag caliber I know it was available early on in the uh, what 6.5 and 55 uh, another cartridge I really like and it's a very unusual firearm I uh, hope you have seen our other videos on it if not you'd better get at it because we've done a lot of it and a lot of explaining of it and uh, mainly we're going to just shoot some longer range targets today I'll probably struggle with some of those little guys over there this is a carbine I just had this one about a year I guess and uh, uh, you haven't seen this I guess uh, this particular rifle so this one is mine it was made in 18 no, I mean it's an 1899 model it was made in 1903 I checked the uh, serial number and uh, researched that and uh, so that's almost a hundred years old and I remember those uh, years well but uh, I was too little to shoot the crag at that time but we're gonna shoot it today okay so I'm glad you're here with us it's probably a little bit warmer where you are uh, guarantee you it's freezing out here I'm going to load it through this loading gate. How's that? It's like a uh, paintball gun. You get your hopper there, you dump your ammo in, and, and uh, we discussed that at length uh, some of the other videos that you're going to see if you haven't. But it's a pretty interesting little design. has some limitations, some negatives, has some positives. Now, when I push the bolt forward, nothing's going to happen because the gun's broken. No, it's not. I have the uh, bolt, the cutoff, magazine cutoff down, so you could load one round at a time if you wanted to. Okay? So now when I come up, it will push one of those little torpedoes into the chamber and we will sling it over there and try to hit something, okay? Now, let's see what we can do. See, it's going to pick up a round. Well, it's going to better pick up a round. You know what? I didn't put too many in, did I? Did y'all help me count? Let's, uh, let's take a look and see what we got. That's one of the neat things about it. You can unload it, just uh, dump them out pretty much which could be considered a negative. There's four. No, I just had five. Okay, I don't know what we did there. Yeah, two, three, four. Y'all learn right along with me. five. And there we go, we got one in the chamber. Okay, that's the first time I've had that happen. Uh, usually when something like that's going to happen, it waits uh, until the camera's rolling. You know, Y'all notice that? Just like when I miss. Uh, would y'all believe I never miss when the camera's not rolling? But sometimes I miss when y'all are watching. <sighs> yeah, I know you believe that, don't you? Well, let's see if we can put one on the, the plate up there before we start plinking at those little guys. Ah, uh, okay. If I don't hit anything else, I hit that. <laughs> okay, we'll start over on the left. I have to kind of hold up on it. I think I need to adjust the sights a little bit to get it right where I want it, but I need to hold up a little bit up on the target higher than I like. I think I held up a little too much. Now stay calm. It's a cold day. I just walked over there and back and heart's beating which is the way it would be if you were in combat, right? Heart better be beating. All right. All right, that felt better. Didn't feel so good on that little piece of steel, I guess. I like this rifle. Of course, I might not hit anything else with it, but uh, it'll stay on the left up there. Ooh. 
Yeah, we'll miss on the left. <laughs> okay, so let's put a few more in. We'll open up the hopper. Okay, the magazine. And the magazine, actually, though, I've got the bolt open. It doesn't have to be open. Again, one of the advantages of this is uh, I could have one in the chamber right now, and uh, maybe there's a lull in the battle, and I could top it off. You know. And you couldn't always do that so well with uh, bolt guns. Three, four, five. Now, during the uh, 1890s, uh, well, the Spanish-American War is where the, I guess this gun uh, was most famous for its use uh, with the Rough Riders and Teddy Roosevelt. They actually had these carbines like this one. And uh, now this one wasn't there, but because uh, it was made, as I said, 1903, if you know your history. And uh, so it wasn't around in, you know, 98, this particular gun, rifle. But uh, there, were, there were some of the armed regular troops, uh, quite a few had the Krag. But I think mainly the, uh, the Rough Riders that uh, Teddy Roosevelt led uh, had the, the carbine version of it. He had special strings he could pull, and he was able to, to get these new carbines. Uh, for a lot of his uh, his troops, he had been what Secretary of the Navy, and so they did have these. And uh, but a lot of a lot of uh, folks soldiers during that war were carrying the old trapdoor Springfield black powder 4570. All right, now I'd actually said I could have one in the chamber, but I didn't, did I? Okay, so we got this little lever up. That's your uh, magazine cut off. Okay, now it's not cut off. I don't want it cut off. I want to put one in the chamber. <sighs> okay. It's a beautiful gun. It, uh, to me, it is. You might think it's ugly. All right. Ooh. Close. No cigar. All right. <laughs> Oh, this takes everything I can do. I tell you, I am just not a, uh, I still claim I'm not a rifleman, you know. On a good day, I can hit what I need to hit, but uh, this is tough. I know there are Marines, well-trained Marines that could just do this pretty easily. <laughs> oh boy, it feels good to hit one though. That's one advantage in case you never thought of it, uh, of being a bad shot. Because then when you hit something, it makes you feel so much better. You know, it's a bigger thrill. Think about it. If somebody can hit anything they shoot at, it's uh, not that big a thrill. All right, I'll shut up. a little guy all right uh, one of the things i enjoy about this rifle is reloading it because it's so interesting i think i'll do what i was talking about i put the uh, well i don't want the mag well it doesn't really matter i'm going to load it it's pointed down range i'm going to put one in the chamber close the bolt i'll put the safety on and then i'm going to load the magazine which holds five so let's do the math how many rounds does that give us they know uh, if you don't get it started right, you could fumble with a little bit. That was one of the criticisms. Three, four, because uh, I'm fumbling a little bit here at times, and the only thing I'm uh, struggling with is the cold, whereas nobody's shooting at me. So that was one of the negatives. Although it, it beat the old single shot uh, trap door, uh, you know, for sure, because it fired uh, 4570, and you had lots of white smoke from that black powder, which gave away your. Your, uh, your spot, your hiding spot and everything. All right, now I've got a couple more. Let me take a deep breath. See if I can pop those guys before it gets dark. Oh, what happened? Uh, leave that down because there was a round in the chamber if it really wasn't on well I just recocked it we'll just try it again we'll, we'll pop that one again I know there's one in the chamber
So, oh, I still got my uh, magazine cut off down, so I need to put it back up in order to pick up another round. There we go. <laughs> right. I shot that one too fast, but I felt like I was right on. Uh, okay. Now, don't you be a smart aleck, you last one. Oh, felt good. I was a little over it. Place, I think. Mm. Gun feels good. All right. I knew you guys couldn't wait on me all day, so I went ahead and plugged it. <laughs> Let's see if we put one on that red plate down there. We haven't hit it yet, have we? Okay. <laughs> really swings it. We need to put one on the finish up up on the uh, the ringer up there. Yep, I'll get that one. We do pick up our ammo when we drop it. By the way, it's just <sighs> not good video watching me scramble around on the ground for a round that was dropped, sticking my butt in your face or something. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I hit it. It didn't ring as loud. Okay. Is that a beautiful thing or what? You know, these old guns like this. And I don't know, most of you, uh, you, uh, you get it. You get it. Uh, there's nothing like a SCAR 17 or, you know, even some of the bull pups you can almost fall in love with, I guess. <laughs> but boy, when it comes to a beautiful gun like that and the sun is on it just right, you should be getting a, a really nice, you know, look at it. To, to know, uh, you know, a Model 1899 made in 1903, and here we are using it today, you know, basically, and it's uh, pretty much its original form, you know, just uh, still does what it was designed to do. It's one of the cool things about firearms in general, and I'll load it while I'm gabbing, but they just work. They're neat little tools, interesting tools, and uh, just a, 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 it's a great hobby. Do I have to tell you that? So we have a couple uh, left here that uh, we've got real challenges up close. We always like to, this is sort of my reward for uh, <laughs> safety on <laughs> These two liters here are my reward for trying to hold steady over there. Because uh, that, that's just not easy. If you've ever done that, it's not easy. Okay, let me back up a little bit here, John, because uh, I don't, I don't, it's too cold for a shower. I know it is for you, because you've been under the weather anyway. So, we can't, <laughs> can't do any uh, rapid fire here. I don't know what I'm doing here, but uh, we'll go ahead and pop these things, okay? Do I have one in? Yep, we're, we're loaded, and we're ready to go. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh boy, that's a sweetie. And yeah, we got two rounds left. I guess I'll put them on something over there. I'll just throw them over there. Uh... Except now, if I miss, I'll have to load again. So I can't miss. All right. Yeah, I knew I wouldn't. So anyway, this is the rifle that, uh, again, Teddy Roosevelt made it uh, famous, I suppose. It was used in some other, you know, like what the Philippine uh, insurrection, the Boxer Rebellion, it was used after that. Uh, but then the the Autry Springfield took its place and uh, in history you know, with the, well, eventually the 30 out six cartridge in, in uh, 1906. But uh, I think these firearms are underrated to a large extent. You know, they catch a lot of flack. Like, yeah, yeah, it's weak, complicated, uh, fragile, would break. And of course, I haven't taken one to war, but 
you know, I think they're pretty cool guns. And if you read the forums and check around, people just love these things. And uh, of course, it's usually hunters and there's nobody going to battle with it. But people just like these. And uh, like me, they're just such interesting firearms. And uh, all the wood and steel and the design of it, uh, how can you not like one of these? Uh, really, really cool. So we appreciate you folks over there in Norway and uh, that part of the world for providing us uh, with this design and uh, for the Springfield Armory for, for putting a bunch of them together. <sighs> Life is really good.